following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Mick Shots. Streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And now it's on to Baltimore. The 0 and 2 Baltimore Ravens coming here. <laughs> right on the on Baltimore. Sunday. <laughs> we won't on. even talk about it. We are else. moving on. Like, Ravens <laughs> start. Wait, Ravens week starts now. now. Bill's exactly a burn, now. The, burn the tape guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to the SWBC Podcast yeah, Studio. Bad. And that yeah. too. No, we didn't get a fight song. We got that instead. We do not deserve a fight song. So no. I just turned the page on some of my notes here. Yeah. And I had to do a deal for Saturday for TV. My three keys to the game. Yeah. The title of the first key was Huge Test. Time to find out if the Cowboys have really fixed their failing running uh, defense from mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number two. Check that one. Number two. <laughs> number two was we want seven. Great that Brandon Aubrey picked up where he left off last mm-hmm. year, converting four or four field goals. But you better start scoring touchdowns. touchdowns. Don't check that one. And number three was home sweet home. <laughs> Keep that, that sixteen one. game winning streak going. <laughs> Keep it going, baby. Keep so it my going. keys were right, and they failed on all three. On all three. Mm-hmm. And so here we are, breaking it down on the Monday after. Can we break that down? Yes. It, 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 it broke itself down. <laughs> oh, my God. It was broken. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had uh, a, Spags and I were at the, the Q&A uh, on Saturday at the Omni, which was had a nice little crowd. For Star Sports Tours. And they actually um, got a little excited. You know, towards the end, we had them kind of excited. And, uh, you know, but one of the things that we talked about was uh, how are we going to stop the run? And we thought that maybe Zimmer would be that saving grace right away, okay? Because right now I'm not giving up hope on giving up hope on, on our defense, but it looked as if we were back in time. I felt like I was right back there against Green Bay, mm-hmm. all or over, against or Buffalo. Buffalo again. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, San but this Francisco. was at home. This was the feeling that you had at home, not being able to do anything on the road. You can say, okay, well, they got the crowd behind them, but but when you're at home and you've lost two straight games in this fashion, man, you got to wonder what the heck's going on. And you know, the worst part was is they tried to play three linebackers against their run-heavy formations Mm -hmm. made no difference. It made no difference. Because you know why? Why? The Saints' offensive line dominated the Cowboys' defensive line. Oh, it's no doubt And they were picking off linebackers left and Mm -hmm. right. Not just linebackers, but safeties as well. And they couldn't couldn't hold the edge. And that included Micah Parsons. What did did we talk about when the, 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 the person asked me, I think, what was my I think I, I mentioned what was my toughest games or where I didn't like to play. It's Philadelphia. And I talked about how back in the day, Philadelphia would attack the edges mm-hmm. and how they would, they would bring those big old helmets on those little, us little bitty DBs on the edge, and they, made, they compromised us because you can play run so many times, and then when that play action comes, you know, you're, you're dumbfounded. You're surprised by it. And that's kind of what happened here. Did you see Trayvon trying to set the edge? Well, yeah, against the pulling <laughs> the offensive lineman. Now, now listen. Okay, let me say this. I was never a strong guy. I hated lifting weights. I never lifted weights until I retired. Got it? I lift weights for uh, just for, so my bones would be in, in place for a long time. Back then, I didn't lift weights. But I still had guys pulling out on the edge on me. And no matter how big they are, Spags, you still got to be in position. You cannot take your anger out on a pulling guard and expect to win and hold the edge. 
You got to keep your poise. You still have to maintain and set that edge. You can do it as a DB. I was 190 pounds, and I didn't set an edge like a linebacker or a lineman, but as a defensive back, I did pretty well. And I know that some, these DBs that they have on this team, they're stronger than I was. They but, lift weights all the damn time. But did you make the tackle? All I had to do was turn it in. That's all I had to do. And, it, and I, I tell you what he never did. He never got outside of me. Well, that's where the problem is. He never got outside of me. If you're playing defense and your safety, Donovan Wilson, is tied for the second most tackles mm -hmm. on the team, mm -hmm. and your cornerbacks that are starting were third and fourth in tackles, mm -hmm. you know you're doing something wrong yeah. because all those tackles weren't against guys catching passes because nope. most of the guys that caught passes ran they were for already a in the touchdown. touchdown. <laughs> they were already in the end zone. So yeah, we're not talking about them. But I, that, but that's that's just common uh, sense football. Uh, you you gotta you gotta set the edge no matter who it is. I watched other defenses last night. Other cornerbacks, other DBs last night. That would be the Texans-Bears game last Not night. Not just the Texans-Bears okay. game, but we could talk about the afternoon games that came on okay. after that. You had some good defense being played by a lot of good teams from a lot of players I never freaking heard of. Mm -hmm. And they were able to do well. They were able to close the gap. The secondary was able to figure out who was running down the field and not running right behind them going for touchdowns. I think I was secondary alone, and this is all I can speak on. I was secondary alone. They need to be more uh, in, in, in tune with each other. You had linebackers and safeties. They were running with their backs to the, to the, to the offense. And when you do that, you can't pursue well at all when they throw the ball to someone underneath you. You understand what I'm saying? I do. And you could see... Of course they're going to run the ball. They, they could get 8, 9, 10 yards. But when you have no coordination in your secondary to stop them from going 8, 10 yards to 38 yards, that's a big difference. That's why you work on pursuit drills. I mean, these are little elementary things that can not stop the bleeding. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm saying as a secondary, we are the last line of defense. And as a secondary... We can't have someone running through there and have no one laying a hand on them. Well, let me simplify you this for this. Their three biggest supposedly defensive tackles, Mozzie Smith, Jordan Phillips, Linville Joseph. On the defensive stat chart, all three zeroed out. Didn't even have an assisted tackle. None. And so if you go back to the first game, those three guys in two games have one assisted tackle. Now, they were supposed to get bigger up front, right? Mm -hmm. They well, did. They also got older. Mm -hmm. And those guys have done nothing. Nothing. And so, it's one thing not to have tackles, but how about holding down the fort? No, the fort just caved in. And, and they were going to get linebackers. Mm -hmm. Even though they played three linebackers, Leofile played his most snaps, uh, Clark and Kendricks. And didn't matter that they played three linebackers. They ran for 190 yards. Here, here's what 190. I saw. 190. What I saw early on was almost, uh, it, it, it fooled me. You know, because early on, like, I think the first drive or whatever, first couple of plays, they actually controlled the line for a couple of plays. And that's it. Once, just one, for a one couple play. of plays. For one play. <laughs> one, one play. Was it first one play? play of the game. One Eric, yard. Eric got one yard. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 but, but once again, guys. Throw that play out, the average 11 yards a carry. <laughs> but once again, once again, once again. Yes, you're, you're going to have drive plays of four, five yards, but you can't have the 15, 20s, and 30s. And as a secondary member, you, you have to be able to stop the bleeding a bit. I'm not saying that you can get up there and eight men on the line, but you cannot have long touchdown runs. That's where the secondary comes into play.
I get it. We got guys up front, they're not doing jack. But you also got guys in the secondary, they have no idea about angles and pursuit angles that you need to do to stop the bleeding. And well, that's all I'm talking about. But, okay, but you also ought to cover some passes. And they didn't do that. Do you realize he only completed, Derek Carr, 11 passes? You know how many yards he ended up with? Like 250 or something. 243. He averaged 22 yards a completion. A completion. 15 per attempt. He only threw, what, 16 passes? 16. 11 of 16 for 243. When he, when he, when he finally threw that bomb, you had, I think it was Hooker. And, uh, and Wilson. Wilson. Split the safety. I don't down know. The I don't know. If Wilson was supposed to be back there, but Hooker was already being influenced by the run because he was way too close to a speedster that ha that you have basically one on one. And the cornerback passed him off because Kalen Carson sat and just he, he didn't even try to cover him, so he obviously was not supposed to. He had a free cover. release. Yeah. Against Hooker. Yeah. And that and that's the 10 yard get, uh, cushion that was closed up quickly. Because, first of all, once again, you got your safeties looking at the heavy run situation that they were facing already. And then all of a sudden, they said play action. Hooker, all he needed was a hesitation. Once he hesitated, the, the receiver's already up on him. And everyone knows what kind of speed you're looking at. See, that kind of awareness, I'm a safety. I, I can't get up there and make a, a, a run stop. But I know doggone well that I'm looking at a wide receiver that I'm lined up over who runs a 4-2-40. So there's no way I'm going to sit up here worried about the run when I have this guy here running a 4-2-40. There are certain, there are certain uh, identifications that you have to uh, uh, have. And good defenses have that. I'm pretty sure that the Saints did well in all of those Nine games in a row, I think that they won uh, at the end of the season. And they, and then four nine, of the last five. Four of the last five, whatever. That's great. Do you think that they ran all over every other team that they played? I don't know. They ran over the previous team. All them, they all got them, run over by the Chargers yesterday. So the, you go. That but, previous uh, team probably not going to win a game this year. And all, of, all, oh, all I'm saying, did, guys. Yeah. All I'm saying, guys. <laughs> That at one point, you have to have a little bit more poise as well, a defense. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. At one point, you have to have some poise. So I kept looking this up. The last time, if anybody even kept this up, uh, an NFL team had six consecutive possessions with a touchdown. <laughs> the best I could find was going back to 1998. <laughs> The record in one game was seven, both by New England in 2009 and 2007. They had seven consecutive possessions with a touchdown. They scored touchdowns on six consecutive possessions. But wait, they also scored points in the first game on nine consecutive, not mm -hmm. touchdowns, but points. Mm -hmm. So they have now scored points on 14 consecutive possessions to start two games. And this is against a Cowboys team that in the season opener in Cleveland, the first eight possessions of the game, the Dallas defense gave up 45 yards and one first down. Yes. The first and eight possessions against the well, Browns. I told you, we're not, I'm not going to crown Zimmer yet because of what we did in Cleveland. But, yeah. So here are the numbers. Against Cleveland, first eight possessions, 45 yards, one first down. Against New Orleans, First six possessions, 379 <laughs> yards and 20 first downs and six touchdowns. And I've got someone writing me, texting me, Nate from Frisco. Uh, man, he, he called it last week. I tell you guys oh, you they have a Nate nice offensive about line the gaps. and the scheme they run is outstanding. And in regards to your your words about the off the defensive line, he said, was it the Texas two-step <laughs> 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 with the D-line or ballroom dancing? <laughs> <laughs> the first, that is a good question. The first half against Cleveland, Cleveland had – 54 total yards. Mm -hmm. So how do you go from that 
to this. Are, are the Saints like that good? Well, the system is is different. The scheme is a lot different. Uh, what you saw with the Saints, the way they had that thing all bunched up in there, you know, then they they made them susceptible susceptible to crossing routes and things of that nature. No, that was a very good design. It was a very good design, and they, and they have good players. And they you have used, to have a good design and good players. We which took they the, had. we talked about Taysom Hill on how they move him all over the mm -hmm. place. So they basically used him as a, as full, a fullback. A fullback. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's listed as a tight end. He was playing fullback. That, but early on they gave that up. They didn't even need him in the backfield a lot of the time. There were times when there was just one one running back back there, Kamara, and I didn't see Taysom anyway. Who, who by the way. Is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's still good. Right? Still good. Still he's healthy. Good. I asked you what happened. I said I hadn't heard from him. You, they, you said he'd been injured or something. The previous couple previous of years. Previous couple mm -hmm. of years. Yeah. Well, he's he's pretty healthy now. Boy, he hits that line of scrimmage full speed, mm -hmm. especially when no one's in his way. 190 yards. That's all I can think of. And 243 passing on 11. Completions. You, you, so once again, and we talked and about no this pressure during, either. We talked about this during the Q and A. <clears throat> they're they're going to have problems. We're going to be judging them all year long to see if we can stop the run. This is going to be going on all year long. That's what, what we think? talked about the Q and A. Bill said on to Baltimore. What do you think Baltimore's sitting oh, there, zero and two, seething, and they're going, oh, they ran oh, for yeah. that many yards mm -hmm. at, at home. I mean, against them at home. And by what? By the way, their fullback is about 310 pounds, mm -hmm. Patrick Ricard. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and they use him a lot too. Matter of fact, they throw to him sometimes. <laughs> but they're struggling scoring points too, right? Yeah. Well, they're not. They didn't play us. <laughs> so let's just wait and see before we start getting comfortable. <laughs> well, there's no comfort. There's no comfort in Mudville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or Southern Comfort <laughs> after a game like yesterday. All right. We're just getting started on a Monday after. We continue on to Baltimore when Mixed Shots continues in a moment. That was quick. Hey, Cowboy fans. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game. Crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust Blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusing jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto with Blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit Blockchain.com slash Cowboys to get started. Miller Lite is brewed with great taste and only great taste. The Miller Brewing Company would like to issue a correction. Miller Lite is brewed to be less filling. What are you doing here? Miller Lite tastes great. Look, I'm just reading the script. It says less filling. That's not what my script says. Well, mine says... We'd like to apologize for the previous announcers. Miller Lite is, in fact, less filling and tastes great. Time to shine, legal guy. Celebrate responsibly. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Beer. 96 cows and 3.2 grams carbs per 12 ounces. Fewer cows and carbs than premium regular beer. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel? Attend the best tailgate party in Texas? Tour the star? and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls, with Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Back, back, back to Mick Shots. <laughs> Come shop at the Star in Frisco on Saturday, September 28th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Flea Styles Market at the Star, presented by Maker Place by Michaels, featuring 50-plus local makers offering art, fashion, home decor, jewelry, and kids' items. Market at the Star is always a favorite. Admission is free. Visit thestardistrict.com for more info. 
That's so funny. You seem to enjoy <laughs> I, that. I, I I forgot I was going to read the thing. I'm like, <laughs> you were, I'm glad he said you know go ever. So I'm like, okay. Before, before, where was that? <laughs> okay, coming out of the break, producer Supreme. Okay, he cue. He gives a cue to Everson. <clears throat> go Everson. Right before that, Everson. You were lost in thought or something. You were staring right at the I script, was, and Mickey said, you got the script, and you did not respond. I did not <laughs> respond because I was not looking at the script. My mind I know was it. just You are a distractible the player. The next thing he was going to say. <laughs> Crazy. I'm still, I'm still dumbfounded. I swear, my mind was all on yesterday. All on yesterday. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell I'm talking about from yesterday. You look like Kalen Carson letting Rashid <laughs> Shaheed go. <laughs> um, oh, and, he, and he didn't let Olave go to set up that first touchdown. He got beat on a deep mm-hmm. pass. They had, they had a completion for 70 yards and... 39 yards. Mm-hmm. It's 109 yards in two passes. Yep. So you take those two plays out, we did pretty yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I found it. They barely got to third down. I found it. I mean, they were three for three on third they, down. They never like hardly enough. got yeah, there. Yeah, they like third and one, third and two. Exactly. They yeah. weren't even. Yeah. The second down was our problem. First and second down was a big exactly. problem Exactly. And um, it just it looks just like Green Bay looked uh, last year. It looks just like those games where we on the road where we couldn't stop anybody from running the ball. So when you take a look at everything that went on through the entire off season until now, then you say, "What the hell have we been doing?" You gotta wonder what have we been doing, what have we been thinking, and what are we gonna do next? You That's know, the most important thing. We actually had. Four of these games last year, including the playoff game. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is a Cowboys team that went twelve and five last year and then got blown out in the playoffs. But four of the losses they fell behind by double digits in the first half of the games, starting with the Arizona game, mm-hmm. fell behind fifteen to three in the second quarter, lost twenty eight sixteen. San Francisco <laughs> fell behind twenty one to seven, fourteen points in the second quarter. And lost forty-two to ten. Buffalo fell behind three touchdowns, twenty-four to three in the second quarter, and lost by three by three touchdowns, thirty-one ten. And then Green Bay fell behind twenty-seven to seven in the second quarter and by twenty points and lost by sixteen, forty-eight thirty-two. It's like a, a trend of if you if this team falls behind like that, mm-hmm. there there's no way to get back. And any team would be like that. Any team. But there were four instances of that over 18 games. In, in the same style. Mm-hmm. In right. the same style. That's what's, what's unnerving. Also by giving up heavy run plays. And, and that's one thing. But just because the defense can't stop anybody doesn't preclude the offense from scoring touchdowns. That's right. Right? And when you get in a track meet, you got to score. You got to keep up. And they're kicking field goals. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Kicking field goals. And you guys. Are and in, in every game, that's, that is what happened. We're kicking field goals as opposed to scoring And touchdowns. even in the first, you yeah. know, it was only two. Touch- so it's now three offensive touchdowns in two games. Mm-hmm. That, that ain't going to cut nope. it. And I, I saw some passes yesterday that if Dak would have, it seems like he's trying to throw off his back foot or something. He needs to, you know, keep put 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 more something into it to where he was never comfortable in the pocket. I'm and not and sure. the, the throws down the field, except for the one to CD, he was holding up receivers. There was there was a couple of times I think it was Tolbert. Man, he had the guy beat deep, and then he had to come back and make a great play. There was another time he had the guy beat. He had to come back and try to make a play, and the guy knocked the hell out of him, and they didn't even call it. And then the one CD was open, and he overthrew him. Yes, that one as well. I, I, uh, in the end zone? Yes. Who was, what, was, what was going on with that? Because he's here. CD's here. He seemed to throw it. It seemed like a 
He didn't throw. He didn't throw yeah. a post. He didn't throw. Right. It, 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 like he a, threw it over here. Was it a side adjustment that, was, that, that uh, where they were weren't on the same page? You know, where, yeah. where it's a read where CD ran a post and and there uh, were a couple was, times and I don't know if it was after and that he was one, open. They yeah. were talk, he was open. Right. They were talking on the sideline. Like, yeah. They okay. Well, how, how did we miss yeah. that? Yeah. I I I I don't know what happened. Well, that one I okay. But when you're talking about, I saw three deep passes that could have been thrown much better, and he's he's thrown those before. So tell me on that, uh, on a, a an adjustment like that, where the quarterback and the receiver have to read the corner, the coverage. Yes. Okay. What yeah. are what are they reading there? Is it leverage? They're, they're reading how how the cornerback's lined up. Right. And they're also trying to read wherever the safety is. Mm-hmm. So if there's a safety in here, I don't think you want to necessarily throw it in here unless you're going to make it a, a, a timing. Route. Right, right. And I think that could have been one of those, uh, 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 what do they call it, uh, uh, East West Coast offense timing routes. So as soon mm-hmm. as his back foot hits, he throws it. Right. It's not necessarily a three-step. It could be a five-step, but it's still a quick yep. timing route. Yep. Initially, the, the, the receiver was inside of the defensive back, but the safety was also inside. Mm-hmm. The cornerback was outside, safety was inside. You can still make, hit it in there quickly, and he was open. But was that the read? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Well, they had three possessions in the red zone. They went 0 for 3, scoring touchdowns. Kicked two field goals, and I think one ended on downs. So think about that. You get in the red zone, you got to score touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying you're going to do it, but – if you score touchdowns on three of those possessions, that's 21 more points. Mm-hmm. That's 40. At least you're in the track meet, mm-hmm. right? But they're kicking field goals. Yeah, and the but, but touchdown they scored offensively was kind of fortunate, right? What did Dak throw? Maybe a 10-yard pass to mm-hmm. CD, and mm-hmm. he ducked under two mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. And Missed goes, tackle. And... What was it? Six? Well, I'm, I'm not going to – I'm not going to – Di- uh, diminish no. how yeah, touchdowns are made. <laughs> but, <laughs> because, but again, I mean, we could say the same thing a lot of times about some goofy stuff that we did <laughs> but that was, on defense to, to that allow was them to strange. be successful. Uh-huh. But that was strange. It wasn't, like you, yard screen right. it wasn't like you drove down the field and scored <laughs> a touchdown. DBs act like they never seen a guy running down the field. I mean, it, they didn't drive and score touchdowns. No, I understand. They I got understand. fortunate. But now, we were fortunate with field goals as well because those weren't easy field goals. No, two from 50. So, I wouldn't say that, you know, you could just, let's just score a touchdown from there. You were lucky to get a field goal Have you seen from the there. way uh, kickers are kicking field goals yes. this Man, year? Is that crazy? 50 is easy. Fif- is that crazy? <laughs> Apparently, it's easy. 50, Apparently. 50 is uh, the new 40. Across. I saw that. Like, right? all day it's the new extra point. We I mean, used to judge guys every, on 40. Yard field goals. Right? I didn't see they were, any field goal kicker miss a fifty. I didn't yard either. Yesterday. It was twenty. Uh, they were twenty-one. <laughs> the league was twenty-one of twenty-three on fifty-plus yard field goals last week, and I think they were perfect this week because every single game I was watching, when a kicker was lining up for a fifty-one to sixty-yard field goal, I said, "Well, they're going to make this one." <laughs> and sure enough, they, every single one of them they made. But then you know what's crazy? How everyone has a place in this thing. You've got certain kickers. Well, he was uh, the last six games last year. He was a top-rated kicker, mm-hmm. and then they had another kicker. I saw his stat. Well, the, the, he's had more made field goals than anyone else. You know, then this guy has a better percentage than anyone else in history. Mm-hmm. So yeah, kickers are becoming studs. Mm-hmm. They're becoming the studs of the team. Actually, you know, and the reason that the the reason the Commanders beat the Giants yesterday. Truly was because the commander's kicker who they signed this week, Austin Seibert, went seven for seven on field goals. They scored 21 points in the game. They were all on field goals. The Giants, they lost their kicker on the opening kickoff. (laughs) He pulled a hamstring on the opening kickoff. And so the reason they had 18 points at the end of the game was because they couldn't kick an extra point because they didn't have a kicker. And God forbid if they had a field goal attempt. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Tough game. Tough Uh game. But you got to score touchdowns, and they're not. Well, here's my thing. They're not. Okay, you got to score touchdowns, but you got to stop people as well. Well, I understand. And, and, and we talked about what well, what I want from this team is a defense led, defensive led team. Well, you didn't get it. Uh, not yet at all. Uh, and this, last this week. is the only way we're going to be a good team. Yeah, you keep talking about last week. <laughs> you said we're going on to Baltimore. We're still talking about Cleveland. <laughs> and that's not the way to go because 
we have to be a team that can evolve into a good NFL team. And the only way we're going to do that is if we stop things like that happening. <laughs> we're watching uh, <laughs> over NFL Network. And, and over they, again. They he's not showing, even running hard. Why are they showing, keep showing Alvin Kamara? Over he's, over. he's not even running fast. Yep. And they're still not catching him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how out of position our secondary is. He's running through them as if they're He looked like Marcus Allen. Come on, man. He looked like Marcus Allen at 60 years old. You got to do better. You got to do better. <laughs> well, how about a 57-yard screen pass? Yeah, we That's just saw we it. Was that the one they it. just showed? So what do, you, what do you think of on, the, on uh, the Cowboys' initial defense on that and how they took advantage of the Cowboys there? They had, they had lined up. The on that play, they had lined up one of the linebackers on the line of scrimmage to the right. Yep, it was Leo Fowl. Leo Fowl. And he took an outside rush. He took an Tackle outside took rush, him out. Took him out, and there was no Lawrence defense had end. a. And so the guard was blocking Demarcus Lawrence. Right. Lawrence does a quick spin, uh, a swim move to the inside, and so he was totally. It was just vacant right there, which left the guard. He got past the guard. Well, it's a screen pass. And Kamara is right behind the guard, and whoever the linebacker was that was left there had no chance. Because And then Kamara, with his speed, it, just it took was, off. It was Kendrick's, yeah. and he couldn't get over yeah. it. I saw so many games yesterday to where you didn't have to worry about one freaking man. Right. You worry about more than one man. That was pursuit. But, again, good defenses have pursuit. But, but – what I saw on that was they took advantage of an over-aggressive defensive yes. front. Yes. Which is what we saw time and time again last year. And, and it I happened th again. I thought we were So then what happens that. what happens with the other seven guys right. on the team? Yeah. What happens with the other seven well, guys? Well, you would have to Defense see the film. is all about a team game. You have to have team recognition. What did Tom say about the flex defense as far as um, doing your job? And Coordination. Not, and not um, you know. It's coordination. Yeah. It's coordination. Yeah. So you've got they're, they're ready for the run. They, it's, they, I think they fake the run. So then you've got guys out of position. I get that. Now they're trying to scramble and get back for a deep pass. So you've got linebackers and safeties with their backs to the ball. Their back is to the play. Their recognition is so bad, they don't understand it's a screenplay until the guy's 20 yards down the field. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff I'm talking about. That's what we were taught as defenders. I get it. Yeah, the, the scheme, I get it, I get it. But when you're talking about stopping a 58-yarder, holding it to probably 12 yards, that can be done. I saw it done all day yesterday, and it was done by an entire team. They weren't worried about, oh, well, he's got the guard there on that mm -hmm. linebacker then, so he can cut inside. Well, where the hell is everybody else? There's mm -hmm. a lot of people on that field. <laughs> playing, the run, <laughs> playing the run. Well, I mean, damn, now he's got the ball. But you ain't catching Kamara. No, you don't have to catch him. You head him off. He's no, not behind you. No, there was no one there. See, so he's talking silliness here. <laughs> no, I'm not. I know there was not nobody there. there. That's where the recognition but comes they, from, but Spags. They, but they got they got taken out. How? Well, number one, they got no, no, faked no. How out. did they? How did the DB get taken out? How did all your sages get taken out on that? On that? Well, I don't, how did they I don't not, know where the. I gotta go look and see you where see, the wide receivers you're talking receivers about. Are. You're talking about the front. I'm talking about. No, the I'm pursuit. talking about where the other wide receivers were. If the receivers up, can only run you so far down the field. But if, was, they're they on the, the, if they're on the other side, you're not in position to make a play. You can. That's why you have legs. You can have <laughs> legs to run into Well, their position. legs weren't as fast as Kamara's, it's not, it I ain't guarantee that hard, you. Bro. He it, didn't even get touched. I was with a team in 1981. We gave up so many damn touchdowns, it was a joke. But we also came back and made some damn plays. Let's see how many and that touchdowns wasn't, you that was a joke. That wasn't a joke either. Because we made many, we made many quarterbacks come in and have their best yardage game, but then they also had their worst interception game, because we didn't give up on plays. We recognized things, even at our young age. We were rookies. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show the video to Everson and Mickey All on right. the Camara screen pass. That sounds good. And then both of you are gonna break it down when we come back here on Mix Shots in just a moment. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pre-game sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and Cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel? 
attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls, with Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Hey, Cowboy fans, I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game, crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust Blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusing jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto with Blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit Blockchain.com slash Cowboys to get started. Miller Lite is brewed with great taste and only great taste. The Miller Brewing Company would like to issue a correction. Miller Lite is brewed to be less filling. What are you doing here? Miller Lite tastes great. Look, I'm just reading the script. It says less filling. That's not what my script says. Well, mine says... We'd like to apologize for the previous announcers. Miller Lite is in fact less filling and tastes great. Time to shine, legal guy. Celebrate responsibly. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Beer. 96 cows and 3.2 grams carbs per 12 ounces. Fewer cows and carbs than premium regular beer. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Back, back to Mick Shots. Are you the 2024 Dallas Cowboys fan of the year? The Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan you know for a chance to be named the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Go Cowboys. All right. We just took a trip to the film room to look at the Camara screen I'm not pass, crazy, which, man. by the way, they just yards showed it on NFL. At the Network. same time, crazy, they got it man. in the film room. They're, they're breaking it down here on NFL Network as well. That's why they're breaking it down, because they realize how incompetent we played in the <laughs> secondary. That's why their players keep running in the back of my head often, over and over again. All right. So what's your take on it? Exactly what I said. You have no recognition from your secondary. None but, at all. And, so, and your concern is turning what should have been a 12-yard completion Maybe, into let's a 57-yard. Let's give them 15. <laughs> let's give them 15, 20 yards. Because, like I said, the, the, the scheme is great. I get that. It's tough to stop. But we don't just lay down. We have to minimize the damage. That's what the secondary's job is. I saw that's guys, all I'm saying. I saw guys running for their lives, and they weren't gaining on it. <laughs> so my question is, <laughs> on that play, how do you keep Camara from getting the screen pass at all? I'm not talking, oh, about, oh. I'm not talking about yeah. keeping a 57-yarder or a 12-yarder. I want him not to get the football on the screen pass. And well, you, you got to stop the run. It all came from they it, they they it, were it already looked, marinated. It, Bill, it, it looked like you had you had, but you had a bunch of players on the left side mm-hmm. up front, and then you had a linebacker Leah Fowl, who did an upfield rush to the outside. He was taken out by the left tackle, mm-hmm. and you had Lawrence with a swim move inside on the guard, which took him out of that vicinity of where mm-hmm. Camaro was, mm-hmm. and then you had the guard blocking Kendricks one-on-one with Camaro mm-hmm. with the football in space. And you had the other corners on the other side covering their guy, and by the time they realized it, recognition, recognition whatever, is bad. but still they it's weren't going to catch And it looked like Hooker had, the, Hooker had the tight end, Jawan Johnson, who basically ran a post route right to Donovan Wilson to block him because he knew it was a screen and pass. So you got Hooker and, and Donovan Wilson. You got Hooker and Wilson both with Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. With but Johnson you know what happened? You know what? And Dennis Allen was right after the game. He was very humble, and he said, when we established the run game, everything else fell in That's place. That's what I just mm-hmm. said. And you start, run. you start getting so conscious about stopping the run, then you get susceptible to a receiver running straight down the field, 
That's what I'm telling you. They were already marinated. They were already marinated, mm-hmm. Bill. They were ready to be cooked. Mm-hmm. They were already marinated. They they were all the run the run game itself got them ready. And the, from then on, they were all prepared for the setup. And you know that was only their twelfth play of the game. They, that was their well, third touchdown in twelve yeah, plays. See that? <laughs> that was a quick marination, wasn't it? Uh, that's right. It, <laughs> it, might, quick marination. it might have only been their third or fourth completion, <laughs> by the way, at that point. And they tried to play the heavy guys up front. Mozzie Smith, thirty-three snaps. That might be a single game high. Linville Joseph, 24 <laughs> snaps, and Phillips, 19 snaps. And you pointed out their effectiveness. And they did nothing. Yes. It's one thing not to have a tackle, but it's another thing not to hold down the line of scrimmage. And once again, guys, I watched a lot of football yesterday. I'm sure you did too, Bill. I'm sure that when you saw some of that great defense being played yesterday by some teams who really shouldn't be as good as ours, you had to think, man, this is what the Cowboys need. That's the kind of recognition we need. That's the kind of aggressiveness we need. That's the kind of intellect we need, Spags. You got to be a but smart defense as well. how do you have it one well. week and you don't have it the next? Because you have two offense, three offensive linemen for the Cleveland Browns who ain't worth jack. Well, that's how. Got a pretty good. <laughs> that's how. Because they got. And they didn't even try to run the ball. They got whipped up front both lines. And everyone was disappointed in Cleveland. They said they never tried to run the ball, and well, they didn't. Well, they tried. They didn't get anywhere. They didn't try. They they didn't try. You got to continue. You can't just give it up. Well, when it's twenty-seven-three, you're probably well, at that time. Up. Yeah, it was, it was too, it too much. Yeah, and and why was it twenty-seven-three? Because you scored points, right? You've got a punt return for. You notice they didn't want to kick the ball to Turpin either. Well, they didn't have to punt. No, I mean kickoffs. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, having said all this. They punted, what, twice? I didn't know they had a punter. Okay, having said all this. Yes. Now there's nine minutes and five seconds left in the third quarter. Yes. And you you had the ball coming yep. out of halftime, and you did get a field goal, not a touchdown. Okay. What's the score? But it's 35 to 19. Okay. It's technically a two-score game. You're yeah. down 16 points. No doubt. Saints take over with 9.05 to play in the third quarter. And they go 70 yards in 13 plays and use up seven minutes and 56 seconds of the clock to score a touchdown again with 109 left in the third quarter. So you only had the ball basically one time in the third quarter because you couldn't stop them defensively from an eight-minute drive. That's why you have to be good on offense if you can't stop anybody on defense. Mm -hmm. You have to be just as effective as as Spags was saying. Complimentary football, Mm -hmm. and they didn't compliment each other very well. That's where the run game, I mean, on that that eight-minute drive, Kamara caught a pass for eight. He was stopped for no gain. And then um, Taysom Hill went for nine yards on third and two. Uh, then Camara for three. Camara also had a carry of 10, three, four, and a touchdown run of seven. Do you realize they scored two touchdowns on that drive? Yes. What do you mean? They, they got did. one called back. Oh, yeah. And they still scored. So yeah. they would have had – they scored seven touchdowns. That was a one, two, Don't rub it three, four, space. five, six. <laughs> they actually scored a touchdown – um, that was called back on the sixth play of that drive. And so it would have been, had that stood up, it would have been a, a drive that was uh, half the length. Mm-hmm. And it had looked like they had stopped him on third nine and Jordan Lewis got called for interference. And by the way, the penalty was the ineligible player downfield, yeah. which he was like two yards downfield. Well, he wasn't the only one. Yeah, there yeah. were a couple of them. But it was two only two. Downfield. It was just on the other side of the right. line of scrimmage. Okay, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. <clears throat> I'm sticking up. Put for your the... referee's hat on, your official's hat on. Okay. What do you think of those calls that were all going against the Cowboys in the early part of the game? Where, where they missed calls on pass interference, that and they missed a, a face miscall. mask, that and they missed. Bad miscall. Now imagine how this game would have played out differently, Mickey. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it that was the just, difference in the game. It, it would have just delayed the inevitable. <laughs> That's right. And that, 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 once again, I saw the games all yesterday. I saw defensive plays being made against some damn good offensive schemes and good running games. Oh. And they endured throughout the entire game and kept giving their offense a chance to win the game oh, time after time after time. I got to get the cornerback's perspective. If you did you see the end of the Chiefs Bengals game? Yeah. 
Was it okay, interference? What, was it the, was yeah, that was interference. Okay, all right. Yeah, it was easy call. I okay. didn't see it. I heard yeah. it. I read. Was, I mean, but and the play like that where all you have to do is stop them, man, if you just rake that guy's arms – you don't have to it's go a rookie. Over. Rookie, manager. just rake the guy's arms. He's got man. Just rake that guy's arms. It's incomplete. Bam, you're done. Rookie Bengals DB. I, so when I look at all the chances that Kansas City gave Patrick Mahomes, who how, what the hell does he need all these chances for? Mm-hmm. He's Patrick Mahomes, but he got a lot of chances because now he has a defense. I looked at so. I looked at uh, uh, Lamar Jackson being held down. All of a sudden, now they're zero and two. We need a defense, as I've said all offseason, we need a defense that we can depend on. You know, it's interesting. On the on the pass, inter- pass interference call, people say, oh, the officials need to let, the, let them make the play, you know. Or actually what needs to happen is the DB needs to – let the let make them make the play. Make them make the play. Yeah. First of all, don't it, give them the play. But it was, make them it, make was the play. it was too soon. It was yeah. too obvious. It was you just you can't just say, oh, that was a guy trying right. to make a play. That was a guy trying to make a play, that but he did. Gets back to situational awareness too. That understand that this is for the game right here. Don't talk and to me, Bill. Go talk to those guys. <laughs> 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 All right, Mickey, you got anything else to wrap it up here? Uh, he's lost in thought. <laughs> what are you think, looking up? I, I, was, that screen I know. I was looking up that 1981 <laughs> season where he said they gave up all these touchdowns. Uh, <laughs> I'm in passing touchdowns. Uh, 17. 16 rushing, one special team. Mm-hmm. That's not bad, is it? Over 16 games? I'm talking about um, – Passing touchdowns. Yeah, seventeen. That's all. That's pretty good. Isn't a lot it? of big plays. I mean, you, you won a game. Won a game. Not to mention a big play that set up some other plays. You had twenty-four passing touchdowns and gave up seventeen. Three point three percent. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. Not bad. You know why? Better than you because thought. Because we got recognition. <laughs> because you had interceptions. Yeah, and yeah, because we recognize we can make interceptions now. It's all recognition. How many? Pick, However you want to put it. How many picks did they have? Everson's eleven plus one. Like thirty something. We led the league, I think, as a team. Oh, he's not looking at you. Right. Well, in 1981, you only had one of these games that was at San Francisco, which mm-hmm. you talked about last week. Mm-hmm. I think the regular mm-hmm. season game against San Francisco was mm-hmm. 45-14 loss. Yes. But once again, that was on the road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That was on the road. I'm talking about being at home. It's traumatizing. Third key, home sweet home. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that was part of your key. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it for a less than victory Monday here inside the SWBC podcast studio. But there's studio. 15 games to go. Yeah, That's right. Baby. 15 more of these. Out. All right. And we will shout at you again tomorrow here on Mix Shots. Go Cowboys, please. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?